Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today on the Plant 101 series, we're going to talk about lighting. Probably, you know, first or second most asked question on the channel overall is what light for my planted tank? And everyone that's ever asked me that question always knows like, oh geez, he starts asking me a bunch of questions on what light he's going to recommend. But hopefully, I can explain the process of thinking to get lighting you're going to need and dispel some myths and rumors and things like that. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to cover a few things here. First, the best thing you can do is have your light on a timer or have it have an internal timer built in so that the lighting is consistent every single day. A consistent photo period, and that's, that's what you call the length in which a tank receives light, uh, is very important. And that's why when sunlight's coming on a tank, it can play havoc with algae and all that kind of stuff. So when I'm talking about 8 to 10 hours of light, that means, yes, the physical light you have on your tank might be on, but it also might mean the light it's getting from a window or something like that. And so typically you want to start somewhere between 8 and 10 hours, and then that leaves you room on either side to adjust in case you need to. So most plants can photosynthesize somewhere between 12 and 14 hours at the very max. And then most don't do well with under six hours of light. And so if you start at eight or 10 and you decide you want more light or more growth, you can bump it up a little bit. Uh, conversely, if you want to slow stuff down or you're getting a little bit of allergy problem or something like that, you can dial it back a little bit still too. So, you know, that's, the most important part, I think, is making sure that it's consistent from day to day. And I know most people go, well, you know, I get up and I turn it on, and then when I get home, I turn it off. But every day is going to be 10 minutes different, 20 minutes different, an hour different. Oh, I forgot once. And anyone that's got a planet tank that forgets to turn their light off even once knows how devastating that can be. And you might spend months trying to fix that mistake. So, you know, a timer. It's key. Whether it's built in or whether you're buying one, doesn't matter, but it is key. So the next thing is spectrums. And what a spectrum is, is what the color of the light is. And so, you know, like if we wanted to read a book in our house, we typically want soft white. Whereas when we're in a doctor's office, you know how it's that really white, bright light and it seems like a sterile environment? That's more of an actual... Uh, you know, white light as they call it, or a true daylight, which is 6,500 Kelvin. The reality is plants don't care that much. They can respond to some things a little bit better than others, but somewhere between, let's say, 2,700 Kelvin, when that'd be that light you want to read by, all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin, which would be kind of a, uh, a white light with a lot of blue in it, that giant range would do well for plants. Now, there is a few lights that are outside of that, actinic light or coral lights, the blue lights on a saltwater tank, they tend to not do very well for a planted tank. But everything else, the color can technically grow plants. Now, realize that just because it can grow a plant doesn't mean you like to look at it. You could go, oh my god, that tank is so red, it looks terrible. Or, oh, it's too blue, or the fish looks terrible, something like that. Realize all those things can be true, but as far as the plant is concerned, essentially light is light. And yes, I know there's people out there going, that's not exactly how light works. I understand this, and I know that plants see green spectrums the least, they see reds and blues the most. But to keep this in the scope of a plant's 101 class, so to speak... Let's just go with light as light, so long as it's not over 10,000 Kelvin and really on that blue coral light. So now if we know that all spectrums are essentially equal, then you kind of pick a color you like. It tends to be most hobbyists like a 6,700 Kelvin. That's what the sun looks like. Maybe a 7,000 Kelvin. Some people with African cichlids like 10,000 Kelvin because it makes all the blues pop. Um, rarely does someone actually pick and like 2700 Kelvin, but those bulbs tend to be very cheap because you can buy them at hardware stores. So, you know, five minutes in, we've covered a lot of things, and I realize those are all quick, but those are all building blocks to actually talking about lighting. So we got to assume that 
most spectrums are created equal. We got to assume that we're going to put the light on a timer and make sure it's consistent. The next thing I want to outline, I guess, is if you have a choice in lighting between not quite having enough or having a little bit too much, I would rather have a little too much than not enough. With not enough light, you might not reach the plants, they could die. Uh, with too much light a little bit, you might get a little bit of algae growth and you can watch you know, our algae tutorial and figure out uh, how you're gonna address that. Maybe it's a couple little algae eaters and you have more than enough light, your plants are growing, great. But when it comes down to actually choosing lighting, it almost doesn't matter in the fact that there's nothing that just is the best. And there's, you'll, you'll talk to people and they'll say, well, I think T5 lighting is the best. Then the next person might say, I think LED lighting is the best. The next person says, well, I just have a T8 bulb, so that big fluorescent bulb uh, on their tank. And well, I'm growing my plants just fine. And the reality is all those people are correct. They all are growing plants. They all believe their opinion. It's all correct. Now, we want to take this outside of what do you think and make it more of, well, how can I make an educated decision? Okay, so let's do background research here. So LEDs are relatively new. Within the last five, six years, they've really been able to grow plants. Before that, the latest and greatest technology was T5 bulbs. And those were the skinny long fluorescent bulbs and they're good. And with that kind of came the power compact bulbs. And so that might have been straight pin power compacts or square pin or even the curly Q bulbs that you might put into your house. That was before that. And then before that we had T8 bulbs. That's the little bit fatter, long skinny fluorescents. And before that even, we had T12s. Much before that, we didn't grow a whole lot of plants, but with the T12s, even those, those big fat bulbs you see in office buildings sometimes still, even back then there were plants that would grow under that. And that's an important lesson. So. If 30 years ago we could grow an Amazon sword with a T12 bulb that puts out very low light with a PAR meter, then today we think, well, we should be able to grow that plant with a T12 bulb. And the reality is, yes, we can, but it will be harder to do today than it was 30 years ago. And the reason why is if you buy that Amazon sword from my store, it's already sitting under higher powered LEDs. And then you take it to your home, and if you put it under a T12 bulb, it's gonna have to really adjust itself to live off that low of light. And a lot of times, the environment isn't good enough and the plant dies off. And so, that's why I don't recommend super bad lighting. It's not that it can't be done. I believe almost anything can be done. Uh, but, I think a path of least resistance is what people should take. Like. I've got a, a friend who used to own nurseries and things like that. He can grow dwarf baby tears under a T8 bulb without injecting CO2. I never see that done, and yet he's doing it. And so that further cements that anything can be done if you're good enough. And you can make up for other things. Like his lighting was really low, but he's really good with plants. And so he was able to you know carry his weight through that. Now... Let's say you've got uh, no lighting, okay? So we're gonna go from, a, you're setting a new planet tank up and you're trying to decide what light should I buy? My recommendation personally is, at this point, if you're buying new fixtures, you should only buy LED. And the reason is, is I think the bang for your buck, that's where it's at. If you buy a T5 fixture, you need to replace the bulbs every nine months or so because those bulbs, the gas inside of them degrades and at about nine to 12 months, they will produce half as much light as they did when they were new. Now, LEDs degrade a tiny little bit, but you might find after three years, they're putting out 1% less light than they did when they were new. So they have a much better efficiency ratio. They take less power while you're running them. In theory, there are some very high powered fixtures that use a lot of electricity, something like a beam works and stuff like that, but it, it works all the same. So my recommendation is LED lighting. And 
you know, there's a million different ways to do that. This tank behind me, for a long time, I ran off of a shop light that was LED. Cost me $25. I bought it from a Costco. Worked okay. I didn't like the way the color looked, where the like the fish didn't look very good. So I ended up switching it to a Fluval 2.0 freshwater light. That being said, it puts about the same amount of light in my tank, except the shop light was $25 and the Fluval light was $185. So huge price gap. And yet the par was very, very similar. So the amount of lights the plants got, the plants didn't care, but my pocketbook did, you know, my wallet cares, but my fish look a lot better and that was worth it to me. So also we've got brands of lights, like let's say a Beamworks light, which it's a, a light made in China. Uh, a lot of times they're not UL rated and they're just gonna be cheap. You're gonna find them on eBay and on the web and stuff like that. Some of them, and you can watch the reviews, put out really powerful light for not much money and that can be a good thing. Uh, at the same time, you know, you can get like a uh, lower powered light and you can grow plants with it too. You got to know what you're trying to do. Like if you're only going to grow Anubias, almost any light on the planet's going to work for you. Uh, same with like Crips and Java Fern. You know, on some of those plants, on Ponte Gitans, Dwarf Quarimlis, some of those plants, I, I literally feel like it's, uh, if there is a light on that aquarium, they will grow. I don't care what kind it is, like, it will just do it, you know. Uh, but then there's things like Dwarf Baby Tears, where it's very dependent on the light. And you need a lot of light. And part of the problem with lighting is the taller a tank is, the more lighting it needs. So, you know, if you think about shining a flashlight down, every four inches of water, it takes a flashlight twice as strong to keep it the same brightness all the way down. And so let's say you had a four foot long tank and it's only one foot tall, that'd be a 33 long. You might get away with a very low powered fixture and still have medium light. So let's say like a Phoenix Stingray would give you medium light. And then you put that same fixture on a 55 gallon aquarium that's gonna be taller and it's going to put you at the low light category. Now, if you take a light like the Fluval light, the 2.0, and you put that on a 33 long, it's going to be so bright, it might actually be difficult for you to grow plants because you've got to put so much fertilizer and so much CO2 in there uh, to combat that much light that it could actually hinder you. And that's a case of we've gone way too far. Um, that being said, with like a Fluval Fresh, you can dial the light power down, which is really nice. And so you could combat that issue still. Um, but you kind of try and pair, what kind of plants am I doing? Are they low light? Are they medium light? Are they high light? How tall is my tank gonna be? And then how powerful of a fixture am I buying? And you can get all different types and, you know, like a Beamworks fixture, they have some that use like 150 watts and they put out a lot of light, and then the Fluval fixture might put out the same amount of light, but at 46 watts. The difference being the Beamworks light was $60, and the Fluval light was $185. So, you know, there's efficiencies and stuff like that you can play with, but I'm not convinced it's so much what type of light, what brand you have, as it is how much light you have. Because I've grown plants under about everything, you know, the curly Q bulbs, they grow plants really well, actually. The problem is to get the amount of light you need, sometimes, like on a 55, you might have to run 15 of those bulbs. And you're going, well, that's really hard to fit that on the top of the tank. Yes, LEDs tend to be compact. Uh, conversely, let's say a high-powered uh, LED might be equal to three T5 bulbs. And, uh, you know, most commonly it comes in a two-bulb fixture. You can get threes and fours and sixes and stuff like that. Um, but they would work just as well. So if we know that a high-powered LED is equal to three T5s with reasonable reflectors, you can't really say, well, LEDs are better. No. Actually, if you had two tanks side by side, they'd perform very similarly. Um, so, you know, so if I had a tank, a 55-gallon that had the Fluval Fresh 2.0, and then I had a 55 that had the Shop Light from Costco, then I had... Uh, 55 that had 
three T5 bulbs on it, and then I had a 55 that had 15 corkscrew curlicue bulbs, they would all be able to grow plants at about the exact same rate. And, you know, when you think about that, there's different prices there. There's different amounts of energy there. There's, you know, different things like, okay, the fluorescent bulbs being the curlicue bulbs and the T5s need to be replaced, for instance. Then there's things like, well, the shop light's not really meant to sit on a tank. It's, it's spread is wide. So there's lots of factors. And so that, you know, we're going to segue into the next factor, and that is how to light that aquarium when we're talking about actual light. So most fixtures for aquariums are meant to light one foot really well because like a 55 is one foot front to back, right? And so is a 20 gallon tank, so is a 29. So, you know, there's a lot of tanks that are one foot, 10 gallon, all those kind of things. Now, most of the Phoenix fixtures are made to light one foot. Whereas like the shop light fixture, it's meant to be hung on the ceiling and light up an entire room. So it's spread, if this is, let me find something that I can use as the LED here. If this is the LED bulb and it's shining down, it has to light an entire room from right this point. Whereas like an aquarium light just has to light one foot. So it just kind of shoots straight down. And where that comes into play is if you put that shop light on the top of your tank, even though it's got really high par, a lot of that par is being shot out of the aquarium and onto the ground, your carpet, your hardwood floor, whatever it is. But it's still good bang for your buck. And then th something like a Phoenix light, you're going to get a lot of par is going to shoot straight down. But let's say your tank was 18 inches front to back or two feet. Then the shop light might be better because it's got a wider angle to it. Uh, or you need to use two Phoenix lights so it lights up one foot and one foot well, or one foot and six inches. Uh, something like the Fluval light, it's got an angle spread of 120 degrees, so it goes like that. Now in the top corners where there's unlikely to be plants, it's going to be pretty dim, but everything else can be lit pretty well. And so, you know, it's really hard to make a suggestion on lighting when someone you know, just ask, I want to start a planet tank, what light should I buy? Because as we've just covered, let's say they have a 75 gallon tank, I might recommend the Fluval Fresh 2.0. If you have a 55 gallon tank, maybe I'm going to recommend the Phoenix 24-7. And if you have a 33 long, then you can either go with a Phoenix Stingray, or you can go with the Fluval Fresh 2.0, because you can dial it down if you want, but I wouldn't recommend the Phoenix 24-7, because typically you buy that light because you want to use the 24-7 mode, and that would be too much light on a 33 gallon like that. Also, the shop light would be way too much light, again, also on that 33. You could get away with using some T5s or other types of lighting, but currently I don't recommend investing your money into that, because it's old technology that is being phased out. And I think a lot of people, your bang for buck is going to go a lot further when you buy LEDs. And then if you ever want to sell it down the road, you can actually sell it. Whereas like a T5 fixture, people upgrade to LED and they try to sell them all the time and no one wants them because they're going, well, if I buy three bulbs for that three bulb fixture, that's going to cost me 60 bucks. At that point, there's certain LED lights I could buy that will produce that much par already. And so it's kind of a, and it's becoming obsolete. And so that's why typically I'm always recommending LED. That being said, if your friend said, well, I have a brand new fixture here, brand new light bulbs, you should totally use it and get your year's worth of grow out of it if you want to. And uh, yeah, you know, you might also have T8 bulbs or something like that. And you might be doing super low light things. And so really you need to think about what is it that I'm going to try to accomplish? And then how much light do I think I'm going to need to do it? And then if you can upgrade, you know, also think of like a Phoenix Stingray is half the price of a 24-7. So you can always start with a Stingray and go, okay, let's see how that does. Ooh, not enough light. You can add another one on there, and now you've got twice as much light as you had, and it was the same price as a Stingray. You know, also like with the plant, the Fluval Fresh 2.0, you could buy tons of lighting all at the beginning and go, whoa, it's way too much. And then you can, you know, press the button and dial it down to the amount you want. 
Um, and you know, those are all options because what you want to do today, you might go, well, I want to do all these red plants. I want dwarf baby tears. I want to inject CO2. A year later, you have a baby and you don't have time to take care of that anymore. You go, well, I want to do low light stuff. Well, now you got to dial that light back. Otherwise you're going to have an algae farm. And you know, so those are all the things you want to think about when you're looking at lighting choices. Now, Obviously, people are going to go, well, can I use a marine line light? Yes. Can I use X-brand light? Yes. Every light can be used. The only difference is how much light do I get for my dollar? You know, even the crappiest light, you could still use like 50 of them and get enough light to do something with it. But it might be like, oh, it cost me $1,000 to do something. I could have bought that light for $180 and would have done the same. So... All lighting is technically usable. You run into limitations based on what can I fit over my aquarium and what is it that I'm trying to do. And I really like either a modular system like the two stingrays so we can turn one on or maybe have one on for 12 hours and only one on for six hours so you get like a burst of extra light or something like a fluval light where you can adjust the amount of lighting. I like to have options when I'm buying a light because just because I have a fluval on this light or in this tank right now, doesn't mean three years from now that I don't tear this tank down and do something different with it. And so I kind of only want to buy lights as few times as possible. You know, also when you're looking at lighting, look into the warranties, look into the build quality and things like that. Like obviously a Beamworks light that's $60 is not going to have a super long extended warranty and super high build quality. But like the Fluval Fresh Light has a three-year warranty, very high um, uh, build quality. In fact, it's waterproof. You can, I'll link the video at the end of this. So you can watch me dunk it under three feet of water and leave it sit there for an hour. And it still works just fine. That being said, they're very expensive at $185. They're $35 more expensive than a Phoenix light. They're $160 more expensive than a shop light. But both of those, if they touch water, are going to go out. They also, you know, everything's got a, a, a plus and a minus to it and you need to figure out what is the application you want to use it you know like right now in my living room i have a tank that's 30 inches maybe 32 inches front to back yes yeah, 32 inches front to back maybe 33 i gotta remeasure i'm using shop lights on that because it's so wide i'm trying to illuminate all of it and so the shop lights work good that being said doesn't put the color i want out and you know, like I've already talked to my wife about switching the lights, but the lighting, if I go to Fluval, I'm going to spend roughly five, $600 to get the same light on that tank. It'll look better, but is it $600 better versus the $50 worth of lighting I have on it right now? That I'm not convinced of. Like, I'm confident that $500 later, I won't go, wow, that tank looks $500 better. So we'll have to see. But that's the way you want to approach lighting. What is it I'm trying to do? What size a tank? What type of technology should I invest in? And where's my bang for my buck? 